Hello everyone, this is Iqbal Khan and today I'm going to work on the tiger bark ficus. Uh, we worked on it last uh, in the last video where the all the dead branches were removed and today I'm going to repot it and uh, so here goes. Let me just uh, loosen the soil and it'll be very interesting to see what we find underneath because it hasn't been repotted for a few years now. Uh, I'm continuing to ease the soil around the edges and the roots probably have also wedged in, wedged the tree in. I do tie my trees in when I repot them. Some people choose not to, but we'll more about that later. Right, okay, so that's... I've gone right down the pot and I'm now going to try and lift the tree out of the pot. Let's see if it does. No, it doesn't. Still not coming out. Let me see. Ah, oh, yes. Okay, here we are. I've got the tree out of the pot and I've got to move the pot out of the way. The tree is out of the pot and now I'm going to start removing the surface soil to start with and uh, just work my way around try and do it as quickly as possible I'll try using the root rake as opposed to the root hook so let's see how quickly we can get this off Also this chopstick might help speed things up where the uh, root will get stuck because there are roots and uh, it's like these roots have gone round and the root will get stuck between the roots. So that's where the chopstick comes in very handy to uh, remove the soil and uh, here we go lift that up. The bonsai trees are kept small by continuously pruning the roots when we repot the tree and uh, the top is pruned and that's what keeps the tree small. As you can see this is what it looks like the underneath of it and uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, give it a quick uh, wash. We have uh, cleaned up the tree, removed all the soil and uh, there's still a bit of soil there. Right, we've um, washed the tree, the, the roots of the tree and it's back in the tray. I've cleaned up the tray and also I'll spread the roots out. And I'm going to start removing these big roots, uh, starting with this one here. I'm going to leave, it, leave the little one, so I'm going to prune it up to about there. I hope you can see it on camera. And uh, so the root is going to be pruned to there, leaving that little root in place. And the idea basically is when removing these big roots to go back and cut just after the um, where the small roots are. So the small roots are retained and uh, that's where the new growth will come from. And in the growing season they recover very quickly and uh, it takes about two to three weeks for the cuts to heal and new feeder roots to grow. This again was slightly above the surface here, so I've cut it from, from that point onwards. And here again we've got uh, quite a lot of uh, thick roots which had gone round, round and round in the pot. And so they are also going to be cut right back to where the thin roots are. Just a few thin roots at the back, so cut just after that. This one is okay, so I'm going to leave that. So coming to the front and there's this one again, just cut this right back, tidy it up, just cut that flush with the tree. And I think that's basically the, as far as I'm going to go with the root pruning around the tree and now we'll take a peek at below the tree, there's not a great deal here oh yes there is there are these again very thick roots so these again I'm going to cut 
them right back and uh, there's another one here as there is this very thick root here Now that was very thick, so I've, uh, that was very thick. I've removed it, and uh, let's see if I can pull this one out. Yep. So we'll cut this right back to here. That's a very very thick root. Let me just take it out and show you what I've cut. So that's a very that's a very good example of a very thick root not doing anything for the tree. Put that away. And uh, there's another one here. So we'll just remove as much of that as we can. There we go. It's that one. another very thick root here and I think I'm, I'm going to cut use the bigger cutter and cut it right back to there there we go as you can see that's very thick root not doing anything but these cuts will heal very quickly usually it takes about uh, two to three weeks you can go a bit further and go right back to where it starts and really about here let's do it in stages because there, there are smaller roots coming from here no in fact there's a thick root here i'll go for that one first there we go that's quite thick and now i'm going to go for this one and remove this root as far back as i can go perhaps here So that's a very thick root with just a few fibrous roots and the cut will do wonders for the tree and as I go further into it I'm finding more thick roots so we will, we will again reduce that in size and uh, this will really invigorate the tree and uh, I'm going to clean up now and we'll catch up shortly. I have prepared the pot and wired it up and um, a lot of people don't wire up their trees into the pots uh, but I do and the first reason is that uh, if the tree is accidentally knocked the feeder roots which are new develop, uh, which are barely developed uh, can break and uh, sets the tree back and the second reason is if accidentally the tree is knocked uh, the wires hold it in place and it can't uh, be moved and I have a lot of squirrels in the garden and any newly reported trees are at great risk. They run around the garden chasing each other and also digging up the soil of the newly potted trees. They bury nuts and then they forget where they are. I'm now going to add my bonsai soil mix into the pot and make a little mound in the middle and basically ease the tree into the pot uh, uh, siting it over the mound and and uh, the soil that we have taken out from below the tree uh, from the center of the tree basically the mound fills that up well i'm going to place the tree into the pot now over the soil mix and gently ease the tree in so that the soil fills in any gaps left by the soil we did remove and uh, I'll check to make sure that it sits in as we want it to 
which it does and uh, I think I'll put some more soil here because it's bending leaning towards the f um, it's forward leaning maybe I should try and do that and that will straighten it up so okay from this side that is my front it wasn't sitting at the angle where it, the, all the surface roots are exposed yeah I think that is about right so I'm now going to start adding the bonsai soil mix right here we go and uh, basically fill up all the gaps and we'll work them in with the uh, chopsticks now I'm adding this uh, fertilizer and we'll bury it around the pot above the roots uh, this is uh, Japanese uh, organic pallets uh, and just bury it all around the tree before we tighten the wires or tighten up the uh, press the soil in into the roots used by the chopsticks so this goes right round like this like this and even here in between the surface roots so that the fertilizer sits above the roots and every time we water a little bit of it will dissolve and the roots will take whatever they need and I tend to fertilize once a year around the growing season and it lasts the whole season and it's easier you don't have to remember uh, do it around April time and that's it job done I have wired the tree and um, run the wires from between the roots to hide the wires as best as I can so I will just get hold of these wires and uh, tighten them up and as they get uh, tighter we have to take the slack out by and as I've said in previous videos you pull turn and release at the same time to take the slack turn pull and release and we continue with the process this pull turn and release and if you over tighten the wires the risk is that you'll break it and you have to start the whole process again there we go it's very tightly secured and uh, now the other wire which is at this end so I'll basically take up the slack before I start doing the, the turn and the pull turn and release there's not a lot of slack here so I will take that out And the, and the way to do the wire to wire the tree into the pot is to do it in such a way as to hide the wires so the wires don't go over the surface roots or are visible when the tree has been repotted now this is when I start the turn the pull turn and release a pull turn and release I think as you can see the pot virtually moves as I move the tree try to move the tree the, the pot moves so that is quite secure and we will now cut the excess wire like that and push the rest of it down and bury the wire as best as we can we'll cover it up with uh, more soil so it's not visible same thing here we'll reduce it a little bit to there and then bury the where the turns are so that is completely away from the view and now what we've got to do is uh, red chopsticks to drive the soil between the gaps as you can see the soil is sinking very quickly what we've done with the chopsticks so the soil has gone down quite a lot and we're going to top up uh, where the soil has gone down for example here it's really gone down we're going to top it up uh, we've exhausted the uh, pushing down of the soil and so now I'm going to use a smaller scoop to fill up where 
the soil was pushed down. You can see how much soil is going in. And the roots are tightly packed in soil and they will come into contact with the soil and obviously water when it is watered. Okay, here we need quite a lot more. I'll use back of the this rake, root rake, to press the soil down where I've just added the soil. And uh, we'll water it shortly and that will complete our repot of this tree. Since working on the tree in the previous video, which was uploaded recently, that's the last video that I did. Uh, when the, all the dead branches were removed. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about this tree and I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to call this my Sumo Ficus because it has the appearance of a big, big body, big trunk and then like Sumo wrestlers, short arm and legs, short limbs. So this is the, this is my Sumo Tiger Bark Ficus. I am now going to water the tree, so here goes. It's uh, just uh, newly repotted, soil is pretty dry, so, and also we've pruned the roots quite a lot, so it's crying out for water. And uh, we need to water it as quickly as possible, and uh, that should conclude our repotting of this sumo tiger bark ficus that's all for today uh, this is iqbal khan at mick bonsai in west london thank you for joining me until the next time and now for the afterthought there was this bar on a 31st floor building and at the bar a journalist had been sitting and drinking alone and in comes a young man, sits next to a journalist and starts drinking. They got talking and it turns out that the new arrival was an out of work actor. Feeling very miserable and sorry for himself, the journalist had been drinking for, for a, quite a while on his own and decided to have some fun. And he said to the young, young actor, come with me and he took him to the window and said to the young actor, if you jump out of this window, I will get you into Hollywood blockbusters. All this time, the barman was watching and listening. And the young actor said, no, no, no. I will be dead when I hit the ground. We are on 31st floor. The journalist says, no, watch me. I will go first. The journalist jumps out and he floats through the air and lands on his on his feet and and shortly after that he comes back up via the lift and into the bar and by the window and the young actor had been thinking that perhaps there is some sort of air current which cushioned the journalist descent and uh, the, the journalist said to him see easy and the actor thinks yep yeah, sure and jumps out of the window and hits the ground and is dead, completely splattered over the ground. The journalist goes and uh, sits down and keeps on drinking. The barman comes up to him and says to him, Superman, you are terrible when you're drunk. You dig?